Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about how to actually learn licks. Now, I think learning licks is very, very important for developing your own playing and your vocabulary. But most people, to be honest, just do it wrong. You see, it's not actually about learning that exact lick note for note and then trying to remember it. Let's be honest, you're going to forget it in a week. But instead, you should try to take ideas and take concepts out of any lick that you learn, any solo or any riff that you learn. Those ideas are the things that are going to stay if you go in depth and you understand exactly what's going on when you play something instead of just you know looking at the tabs and kind of playing the, the frets and on the guitar it doesn't really make sense if you do it just that way and so actually the more you can go in depth and the more you can understand the concepts and the ideas that that particular lick or solo has the more you'll be able to take away from it and start building your vocabulary start actually internalizing those phrases and those licks that you learn so that it's not just a phrase that you you're copying from you know someone else but it actually becomes part of your style part of your guitar playing now with that said i want to show you a lick that i just came up with you're going to see how you can turn this lick into 10, 20, 30 more licks and more ideas just from dissecting what's going on and taking away the ideas and the concepts and repurposing them in different ways, in different contexts. But anyway, before we start, if you're actually looking to improve your vocabulary and improve your phrasing, I recommend you check out the free Modern Guitar Toolkit that I have in the description. And, and that is just a collection of uh, licks, etudes, exercises and, and other resources that you can use to start working on your phrasing, start working on expanding your vocabulary of ideas and phrases and start taking your plane to the next level once again link in the description completely free so yeah make sure you grab it and then i'll see you back here in this video okay with that said let's get into it now here's the idea that i was um kind of playing around with so we're in c sharp minor the backing track that I was playing on is mostly one chord so it's gonna be super easy super straightforward So here's the idea, and it's mostly based around the pentatonic scale. So this is obviously step one, right? You want to learn the lick. You want to learn how to actually play whatever phrase, solo, lick, exercise you're trying to do. Note for note, as close as possible to the original, I would say, so that you actually get it you know exactly how it is and then from there of course we're gonna see how to turn it into your own thing but i think it's important to start with the original thing try to be as close as possible to the original now there's two ways actually you can start this you can either come up with your own licks or you know you can start from a lick from someone else now let's say you're an intermediate or advanced player i recommend you start building your own licks uh, this is something that i usually do myself all the time and basically you want to open up a backing track start jamming and sort of write down your ideas you don't have to write them down and transcribe them if you if you don't want you can just even record them or even just taking them um you know outside of the backing track and sort of analyze what you're doing basically create a lick create a phrase that you can then sort of commit to and also use as a sort of comfort zone lick you know go to phrases that you can always use when you improvise those phrases are going to be your starting point for for then building on top of them and developing those ideas into even more ideas and then from one lick you start to make 10 20 30 and then you basically build your whole vocabulary of phrases and licks that you play all the time and obviously if you start by doing it yourself it's going to sound more original and more you know your style but that is uh, an arriving point so let's say you're a beginner or an intermediate player you want to start with licks from other people you want to start to build your uh, vocabulary of ideas and phrases okay so once you have the lick and once you know how to play it so i'm going to play this low once again so you can learn it and then follow along on this idea with me Once again, C sharp minor pentatonic. So it's sort of relying on these four intervals that you can find in the pentatonic scale. And playing this with hybrid picking, you don't have to. You can use economy picking, alternate picking, whatever you want. So you can even pick the whole thing. So I'll play slow one more time, starting here on the F sharp, so the fourth degree. And then it's all fourths pretty much. Pull off to the E. All fourths once again, so C sharp, F sharp, B. 
pull off to the G sharp and then F sharp, B, E, pull off to the C sharp. Then we jump here to the 14th fret, F sharp, pull off, then C sharp, G sharp, and then G sharp, D sharp. So that's it, pretty straightforward. Again, the whole idea is to have these sort of sus4 pages. Everything is still contained in the pentatonic scale, so we're just using always the same notes. But with these, with these are pages like that, obviously, with basically skipping notes uh, using kind of wider intervals. Um, it sounds a little bit more interesting than just a pentatonic scale. So anyway, this is basically the step two when it comes to learning licks. Wanna make sure you can identify what is the main idea or the main concept. So once again, we're using the pentatonic scale, but we're playing in fourths. So we're using our pages uh, and wider intervals. And it's mostly the same, the same sus4 arpeggio every time. Just a bunch of sus4 chords within the pentatonic scale. And that is basically the main idea. Now that you have this concept, you can start to try it in different ways and try to move it around, maybe within the same scale. So we could start to take a look at other uh, sus4 arpeggio shapes, starting from the ones that you know, you have in the lick, we can go back to, let's say, this shape. And figure out basically every other sus4 arpeggio shape or chord shape that you have within the pentatonic scale. So that could be here, here, I kind of added extra notes from the, the major scale, but you know, it still fits in the key. And the cool thing about this is that the, the shape of these chords kind of stays consistent, so since the guitar is tuned in fourths, you always have fourths on the same fret. So you can just bar your finger, except for obviously the G and the B string. fourth intervals that's the main idea and so once we're able to take that same idea and try to find basically other ways to play around with that you can start to come up with different phrases uh, maybe using different shapes different parts of the the fretboard different strings but still using the same fourth arpeggio thing so i can i can play stuff like <laughs> that's the fourth arpeggio right or i can play basically playing the same pattern of force and then pull off and that's already one idea, one more lick that I can play around with and sort of start to change from there, right? So I can, I can start to change notes, start to change the ending or the beginning, like I can put it in between other notes. Like using the scale, try to combine, trying to combine the scale. That's another cool one. Instead of playing it, so instead of playing it descending like like we played before, we can play it ascending. And all of a sudden, we have one more idea to play around with.
things like that. So again, it's still the same idea, but I'm trying basically everything to expand on it and develop it into as many different licks and different phrases that I can think of. And I think this is the key when you learn licks, right? You, you shouldn't just learn the lick then learn how to play it and play like that every time doesn't make sense we want to build on top of that like we're doing now obviously these are just examples you know sky's the limit you can take it in any direction that you want now the next step from here would be to change the context so we've been playing in c sharp minor same key of the original lick but you can actually take this lick into a different key and maybe try it on a different backing track and this is going to tremendously help you to internalize that idea because now not only you have to think of how to play the lick uh, but you also have to figure out the intervals figure out the, the starting points and the relationships between each notes if you want to make it work in a different key let's say we move to a minor okay so you, you gotta ask yourself okay how can i play that lick in this key first thing you need to do is figure out at least the first note and what interval that is if you remember we started from we started from the F sharp, right? And so the F sharp in the key of C sharp minor is the fourth. And so if we move to A minor, we need to figure out the fourth, which is D. And so... This would be our lick in A minor. Starting from the four, we're actually using the same shape, so it's pretty easy. But you know you can you can even change um, the the set of strings in which you play it. So I can I can play let's say like, down here. It's kind of awkward, but you know it, it works. You can play it here on the D, on the E string instead so once again even more possibilities even more ideas to explore but anyway now that we're in a minor you can actually do the same process that we were that we started doing in c sharp minor this time in a minor so basically we're gonna start all over again trying to figure out all the different four shapes trying to figure out you know how to move basically that arpeggio through the pentatonic scale Again, I'm just following the A minor pentatonic scale. This obviously gives me another way of looking at the scale and another way of looking at the same licks, the same ideas, but um, sort of repurposed in a, in a different context. And so once you're able to do this, then you have the lick internalized in your plane 100% and you can start using it as part of your plane, part of your vocabulary. It's not going to feel like you're playing a pre-made lick anymore and obviously it's a gradual process. Anyway, that's it for today, guys. Once again, make sure you check out the link in the description to get even more licks, even more ideas to play around with. And yeah, make sure you implement all this stuff into your practice session. This is probably one of the most important things you can do to start actually improving your playing, start getting to the next level and start building your phrases and your vocabulary, especially if you're looking to improvise and get better at improvisation. This is the key right here. So yeah, with that said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Ciao.